Hi guys and welcome to another daily video. This is metrics to look for to find and test winning products. All right guys, well, let's just jump straight into this. So, uh, winning products is one of the big things that I'm seeing that people talk about a lot and that's understandable. You need a winning product for everything else to make sense. And I get that, um, completely understand that. So. We're gonna talk about the metrics on that. If you do like today's video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell down below and comment if you did enjoy today's video. But moving on, so step one is we need to know how to find winning products, okay? So if you wanna have winning products, you need to know how to find them. And you need to use, I use, I mean, sorry, I'm really thirsty. Um, Facebook search, like get yours here, get yours here, dog. Um, if you want to niche down a bit further to try and be a bit more specific if you're in a niche store general you just go you know you just go general items there's tons of items there okay um uh, i my personal preference is a sort of general niche store okay so there's technically at the moment there's three types of stores there's a general store uh, four sorry general store niche store one product store is a popular one currently but i prefer a general niche okay and, and it's just how I word it, but basically is you're within a niche. So let's say it's everything dogs. Okay, so it can be everything relating to something dogs, right? So it can be jewelry for dogs. It could be t-shirts with dog stuff on it. It could be dog collars. It can be dog whatever, okay? So you're being specific, but also being a little general so that you're not really running a general store. So that's just how I do it anyway. But um. Um, use Amazon sellers and shakers. Okay, so literally just Google Amazon sellers and shakers and look at the categories. The main ones you're gonna look for is like kitchen, kitchen items. Um, let me. Um, you wanna use Shopify stores plus commerce inspector. So you, know, you find a product, let's say on Facebook, go to their store and use commerce inspector. Um, in Commerce Inspector, you can then sort by best on um, best selling or see, you know, various things. I have other videos on that, so you just go watch that if you want to know more. Um, and any pages that you see that have tons of likes, like again, I have other videos on that. Um, like their page, okay, because you're gonna have, you can look at their page, and you can look at their videos um, and their um, info ads or just ads tab. So just have a look at those tabs. You'll be really surprised what you see there, okay? Now, to add to this as well, Ecom Hunt is a popular product tool, okay? So I know a number of people that use uh, Ecom Hunt. I don't because once you get the hang of it, you can you can either just outsource it um, to someone that's gonna specifically find them, or you can use a tool like Ecom Hunt. That's why I have it there. Um, the drop, the AliExpress drop shipping center. You mainly use that to have. It's more a validation, but you can, if you see a product you like, you can type in that general name and see if it's trending on AliExpress. Um, don't use that as the be and end all because if people are doing real big numbers, they usually have like a private link or they're buying through now um, Alibaba, sending to like a fulfillment center, most likely in the U.S. or the the um, EU region, um, and so they're doing it separately. Okay, so. That, that's why you do that. Um, at Espresso, you can actually find the actual ads there. So you can type in, they've got a section in Ad Espresso um, to actually look at ads, okay? Now, what I forgot to add as well, and I will talk in this next one, is actually your suppliers, okay? So if you have, um, let's say, getting a few sales, ask your supplier what other products are doing well, and they will actually come back with some ideas, okay? The, um, I've found a number of winning product ideas and actually winning products just by just asking that because you build a relationship with them. You jump on, most of the time they use WeChat. Um, so you use WeChat, I don't like WeChat, but you use WeChat uh, to talk to them. Um, some use Skype as well. And you just ask the question, become their friend, they'll do you favors as well, especially if you really want to make this into a long-term business relationship, okay? That's really important. So it's important as well that we know the metrics to confirm if it's a winning product. So what I mean by this is this is mainly to do with Facebook, okay? So the video hat is on Facebook at a maximum of 2018, okay? So you can use the filter options on the side to look at 2017, 2018, 2019. You know, go 2018 max. You don't really wanna go 2017, especially because most people go for 
trending products, you definitely want to go for more recent products if it's of course trending. All right, so uh, it solves a problem. Okay, so uh, this doesn't work for everything, but if it products again, you got to understand the difference between a want and a need. But products that are, are a need item are much easier to sell than it is a want item because a want item, someone's like I can get that at any point because I don't need it right now. But if it's a need item, then it can change their life as we know it. So uh, especially starting out, you want an uh, item that solves a problem. Okay, just something that helps to fix an issue, helps to uh, efficiently do something, more professionally do something without any extra work. Those type of products, and you'll see heaps of them. They're not hard to find. Uh, the video has at minimum 50k views. I just use that as a benchmark because um, if it has 50k views, then to some degree someone spent a bit of budget on it, right? That, that's the logic behind it. You can do video views or PPE campaigns. We can't see what type of campaign they're running. But you know, if they've gotten 50k views, even on either of those, they've spent a good, good, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars at least um, to to get that amount of views. Okay, so to get that amount of views is is a is a indicator that someone is getting some form of traction, right? And and that's for if you're confident that you can market it really well and then scale it higher. Okay, but 500k views. Now, look, admittedly, there is a number of pages as well that um, uh, where people like um, Blue Crate use um, influencers like the pages where they get millions. Okay, that's a bit different. Um, the ones you want to look for when you're looking for views is ones that aren't doing it on a, a well-known page for the most part. Um, it's like, you know, if you look at VT on Facebook and stuff like that, you know, they have 20 million, so any one of their posts can get will get hundreds of thousands of views it's not really the same as much as it's it's seems the same it's a bit different because if you're doing a paid marketing campaign on facebook as opposed to like a influencer which is what they're sort of doing then it, you can get very different results it's the same thing with influencer marketing on instagram right um very very different although the it looks the same the back end's very different if that makes sense okay so Try and look for posts that aren't on a page that have insane, you know, VT, um, I can't remember the name of them. So just, just use that as a benchmark. That'll help you to, to find products. Okay, so I usually go 500K views most of the time. It really depends at times as well. Uh, that's just sort of, again, it's a really, it's a tough one, but that's just a benchmark for you to use to build a scope. That's what the point of this exercise is, okay? Um, so the video has engagement from Westerners. Now, this is actually really important. Um, it is far cheaper to market third world countries, so don't use this. So a lot of people make the mistake that they find a product and that they just market it worldwide. And like, wow, I'm getting such low CPC. I, I went through that. Uh, I remember when I'm like, wow, I am getting so much traffic from India. This is, in like, I, I'm not even joking. That's actually what happened. And I remember I actually split test made a number of ads to India. I'm like, this is working. This is the best result I've ever got. But I didn't get a single sale. Uh, because like, especially like India, you just don't market to. Um, it's pointless. So you want to look at um, the actual engagement, you know, people sharing, commenting and stuff. And you'll see pretty quick, obviously, because of the different languages. So uh, if, it, if it's, you know, Westerners, you can tell. Um, then it's like, okay, because it costs more to market to them. So if they have more engagement, that means they pay more to get that, um, which means it's more likely that that is a product that's actually making them money. Okay. It's as simple as that, really. So it's just, just something to keep in mind. Um, a bitly URL that has cheap clicks, uh, sorry, heaps of clicks. Um, so basically what you can do is if someone's using like a bitly URL or previously a Google Google URL, um, you could do that. A lot of people now are just using uh, Shopify redirect URL, so you can't track it. But basically, a lot of people are still using Bitly. If you copy and paste that into your a separate tab in your browser and just put a plus on the end, you can actually see uh, where all um, the amount of clicks it's actually had. You know, like if it's getting a lot of clicks now or if it's actually dying out. It can be little sort of back end indicators. Um, it's a shame because um 
but you can actually see the countries as well. So that sort of helps give an indicator of, of where they're spending their budget, right? It's just these little things that give you little snippets to save you time and money, right? That's all you really need to do. Um, so once you have, let's say, validated this side and you're like, yeah, okay, I want to proceed further. You want to confirm that the product's getting sales on AliExpress. Um, and again, this isn't 100% accurate like anything, but just literally use the dropshipping center and just type in the product name, you're going to see that, or just type in the name in the search bar up the top and you can then actually um, filter by best selling and you're going to see the amount of sales. Again, if it's got hundreds to then thousands and just looks like going up across multiple suppliers that are supplying the product, then you can be pretty confident that this is a, a product that to some degree has been selling. Don't use um, the reviews as an indicator because most reviews on AliExpress are from Russia. Um, most are from Russia and other third world countries. Um, so don't use that as an indicator. Okay, that's important. Um, the product broad name in Google Trends shows it's trending up. Okay, so if you go on Google Trends, sorry. If you go on Google Trends and um, type in a broad name, because sometimes being too specific, it won't find that. Just type in a broad name, see if you can find a broad match and you can see you know, a graph of the last most, by default, 12 months, the US. If you see it's got a flat line, well then that shows that it's always got interest. If you see it's you know spiked and then just dropping, that means it's the, that it was marketed quite heavily, but now the interest has been lost based on whatever reason. Uh, and lastly, you can see that the um, Shopify stores, it is one of their best selling products. I mean, obviously it depends on the lot, the size of the store, but usually if you use Commerce Inspector, you can actually just go and actually have a quick look at it, okay? So have a look at those. That'll help give you an outline framework to find winning products to start with, okay? Um, so you wanna validate it further. So find the best selling product in AliExpress, contact the supplier, okay? Contact the one that has the most sales. Most likely the one that has the most sales has the best seller rating. That's generally how it is, 90 out of 10 times. He or she will respond pretty quick. Um, you can get really unlucky or really lucky. It, it, most of the time they're fine though, so don't, don't, don't sweat that. Um, and you wanna ask them about the product and how many orders a day they are getting, okay? so. Because you might say they might have 5,000 orders, but that might have been 5,000 orders from six months ago. So if they're like saying that it's getting uh, 100 orders a day right now, well then that can validate it as well. And you can actually just ask as well, is it from other drop shippers, okay? Because they'll know if it's a drop shipper because it'll be coming from the same person, right? And as I've said, they'll be just come from the same person. And you know that person will probably then get a private link. They'll probably look for then private suppliers um, just in China, just through using Upwork and stuff, get it sourced, sent to a warehouse. That's that's it, really. Um, and then they just ship it from there. So you have fast shipping times, okay? That's what I've done. Um, so most of the time they will tell you the number. So just don't worry about this. Some people get worried that they don't wanna go on the wrong foot. They're, it's business, they don't care. Um, they have no allegiance to most actual drop shippers, including myself and yourself. They want money, and so they want to diversify that through uh, that. Um, they're never going to tell you who the person is, of course, but they're going to tell you. They're going to, as you build a relationship, they're going to be more lenient if they're a little bit rigid. Okay, so uh, this confirms that the product's selling well. So it's just little things like that. Now, if you don't have the time or whatever to do that, don't worry about that. That is if you wanted to validate it further. So let's say as well, you're getting a few orders from it. You're like, All right, I want to validate in some other fashion just quickly and uh, just send them a message, okay? Because if you are getting some sales, you'll want to message them anyway, right? So just ask, ask a question. I, I used to not ask these questions, but now I just ask. And the only answer that, I, the only negative I can get is possibly a no. And then we move on, all right? So that's it. Um, so I actually find building a relationship with your supplier is the best product research. Now, uh, I don't see a lot of people really talk about this. Don't get me wrong. Um, it, it is the more time consuming one and you do need past history, but it's actually the best product research because suppliers, once they see you can get a number of orders, they know that you're someone that's serious. Okay, it's like the same with anything. If they wanna know you're serious and uh, they will then, you know, just ask the question, do you have any other products somewhere? Like, oh, yep, I have this one. Oh, this is a trending one I've seen from this and from other manufacturing stores. We haven't sold it much yet, but 
this is a product that we reckon will sell well and it can give you ideas, okay? Saves you time, saves you money, builds relationship, builds rapport, and they're more likely to give you a discount, all right? So, uh, especially if you're in a niche store, they will tell you a winning product. So if they, if it's a niche store, if you have a niche store, they'll tell you more because you're likely using a niche supplier rather than just, most suppliers anyway are sort of in a specific niche, but some are a bit more broad. So. The, the, again, the further down you are, the more specific you can be, okay? So it's, it's basically, it's just a little bit of, of um, networking is all I'm getting at. So most drop shipping, drop shippers doing big numbers source straight through a sourcing manager, which you can get through Upwork. They're like 20, 25 bucks an hour. Um, or a factory, so, they, so you are less likely to see these. So this is what I mean by like, you can't just depend on AliExpress or Alibaba or Facebook and that at times. You want to speak to your supplier because your supplier actually has contacts to these these actual factories, and um, they 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 network too. Okay, so they might tell you of some product that's unknown, that's actually doing really well somewhere in the world. And uh, I've seen a number of people that have contacted me about various things about that and how effective that really is. And it just really comes down to just asking a simple question. All right, guys, so that that only isn't just validating, that is probably actually one of the best forms of product research. You're going literally straight to the very source. They ship the product so they know what products are selling best, right? As simple as that. There you go. Um, so how to market it on Facebook, just quickly over this, is use the same creative video, creative if you can find it, or on AliExpress, or if your supplier has one. Um, if, if you're using IG, a picture works fine with uh, IG influencer, sorry. Um, just use something like Canva to try and make it so it's proper post size. Uh, and obviously if you're doing a story as well, just look at that dimensions and put 50% off sale or um, limited stock available, something like that. Limited stock, uh, limited time only, something like that, right? So that's if you're doing influencer marketing because I know a lot of people like that. Um, so if you're using a video again, you want to do multiple uh, thumbnails of the product. So again, just use Canva. You can, uh, it has literally the Facebook post, you use that, and just make some different variations of that. Don't spend too long. The reason is, is that the hardest part with all of this is the time consuming part of finding the product, putting it on your store, getting it set up, and making the ads, right? So that, that really is the hard part. If you have heaps of winning products, then it's just a matter of maintaining it. It's that step A to B that's the hardest part. And we all know this. Um, so there's two parts. You can test the first few seconds of the video because that's what catches people's attention. And mostly what you can do is you can um, like cut off a second, just cut off or something. Just I've, I actually have done that just because I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered. Or, or just make a new thumbnail as well. Okay, so they see the thumbnail and it catches their attention and they watch it. But again, Try not to do too many because otherwise you're just going to spend all day just trying to trying to do this. I know there is this uh, from other individuals that um, this has been a trending topic at the moment, the one product store, the one product strategy. Um, and I think it works. Uh, and it definitely works, I should say. It's just that that's something on a personal basis that I wouldn't want to do immediately. I prefer diversification, um, especially once you have... A store running you just there's more to it than just one product okay you know think of it like a corporation um, a corporation they focus on their let's say a bank their, their you know you think of a bank and you think of walking in and handing them money and hand blah blah but they have credit cards they have personal loans they have uh, business loans they have all of these and they tap into many you know shares all of this because Although it's all related to money, it's very it's it's subdivisions of the diversification of how to use that, which in in turn means that if you know three out of five of them start going bad, then maybe the other two will pick up the slack, stuff like that. Whereas if you're doing one product, you know trends die. I've seen it happen. You know I've seen it happen myself and others. Trends die. Uh, the product just you know uh, just doesn't sell anymore. That's not always the case with anything. That's the hardest part with this, but it's something to factor in. Okay, guys, it's that's important. Um, you now, look. At, truthfully speaking, on a one product store, if you're doing really well, then likely you're going to start testing a few other products and, and add to that, right? Um, I don't. I, I don't know how they've how these other individuals have done it, and I mean, hats off to them. 
but I have not been able to get a product that I can do very little amount of work on in terms of optimization, testing and scaling uh, for like over a year without very little work and for it to retain profit. Okay, because there's been a lot of changes. Um, and so I just, it's just not something that I think that meshes well with me. So if you have any questions, if you have any concerns about that, because I'm sure you guys have probably seen those other videos and stuff, then um, that's my opinion on that. That's just my approach. It's not right. It's not wrong. Um, it's all valid. But that's just my take on it, okay? Um, and so you followed my other videos for the setup. Um, I think that's it. And so guys, that's pretty much it from this video. You can see how now this should give you a bit of a broad outline of that. I hope this has been helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.